Monica's a technical writer, not a content writer, so <laughs> clearly she has two brain cells rattling around in there. <laughs> <laughs> An entire extra one. Oh yeah, I got a whole spare one. No, no I don't. As an aside to the audience, no I fucking don't. It's okay, between the three of us, I think we've got two functioning? Well, we have one, and we'll pass it back and forth. <laughs> Mom says it's my turn with the brain cell. <laughs> Uh. Mom says it's my turn with the brain cell is kind of this whole show. So, <laughs> wow. <laughs> Welcome to Bonus Experience. We are. Hey, we are a podcast with a deeper look at the play experience and the finer details of running and writing games. And we are queer people speaking with authority about games. And yes, we swear, and you can die mad about it. Stay mad. Your suffering gives me pleasure. <laughs> Perfect. Mwah. Flawless. Incredible. Obviously, you can hear that I'm not here by myself. As usual, today's guest is... Two of the you you also have a rotating group of hosts, right? And yes. You are the two fixed hosts. I, of course, am the pole star host of Bonus Experience. I'm Monica. Um, you are we are internet friends. My audience already knows who I am, so I don't necessarily know that I need to reintroduce myself to you guys again. Do you want me to do that? You know who I am. <laughs> go go listen to the episode before this one if you're lost. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> I'll you can pause. I'll wait for you. <laughs> As for the uh, other two folks here, um, tell our audience who you are, what your show is, and I don't know, if you want to tell them how you know me, that would be fun too. <laughs> uh, hi, I'm Doug Broman, otherwise known as Douglas Scoundrels of the Malifaux podcast, Steam Powered Scoundrels. So yeah, we're an old podcast at this frickin' point. It still feels like we're the, the underdog that does the weird stuff that only a few people like, but yeah, I'm pretty sure we're the longest lasting one at this point like six seven years oh my god um <laughs> but yeah we do the the oddball stuff as far as fandoms for a particular game go we don't talk a whole ton about like how to play the game and be good at it and other shit we talk about butts <laughs> and <laughs> shipping and like who would be the best chef and you know what someone's story twitch career would be if the game took place in modern day shit like that and i am victoria broman also known as the uh, queen of malifo <laughs> <laughs> i am the fixed co-host of steam powered scoundrels and i am also the permanent host of the malifo port authority <laughs> <laughs> format for our podcast where we only talk about characters and making them kiss and if, if you would like to hear me and Vic and yes. some of our other friends discuss who we want to kiss, you can absolutely hear me as a guest on the Malifaux Port Authority <laughs> episodes. Yep. Uh, and the gay subtext of the Malifaux lore. And... So gay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a bonus experience episode called Exalted is Gay. We could have just made this episode Malifaux is Gay. <laughs> I mean, it's probably going to end up that way. Yeah, it probably is going to end up that way. And our audiences are here for it. <laughs> so, yeah, like that scene from Lilo and Stitch, you all had posted a thing on the, a weird place when I was still on Facebook, the uh, unofficial Malifaux Facebook group. You were like, send me an angel, the nicest angel you have. And the Stitch <laughs> cackling was me. <laughs> I I don't know about that. I think you've made us better people or helped in our journey to become better people. Oh, that's very sweet of you. I don't even... What, what, what's that thing? Or We just went on one of the announcements for an episode. We're like, hey, if you want to come on the show, just contact us or, or some shit. It, I mean, I, I, back, in the, back in the day, we did do that a lot. Oh, yeah, I guess Just an open call for co-hosts, yeah. Yeah, at one point we were doing more of a rotation on co-hosts but now like well we said we're the two like permanent hosts really it is five of us at this point um that'd be roman nate and eli are sort of back up the trio of gingers um 
<laughs> the, yeah. the ginger Illuminati behind the entire thing. Yeah, we still try to fold in new people as often as we can, because it's fun. It's fun getting new opinions on shit. Yeah. As of this season of Bonus Experience, we've also started doing a rot Me and one other person is a rotating door of people. Which has finally presented me with an opportunity to have you on my show instead of me crawling out of the sewer to join you on yours. <laughs> <laughs> crawling out of the sewer into a different, bigger sewer. <laughs> Tumbling out of the pipe into your reservoir. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> so actually, that's why I brought you on this, because BXP is a little more broadly game focused. We, aren't, we don't focus on one, one specific game. And I... The Scoundrels and Bonus Experience have a lot of similarities. I think we've been, our shows have been going for around the same amount of time. We have an audience of a similar size, and we're kind of focused on doing something different. I refuse to spend time in this show talking at length about D&D, &D, and I also <laughs> didn't want to do 101 stuff. So, like, the weird stuff that we're doing here is that I always want to talk about something that's not, like, how to run a game, how to balance an encounter. There's... Mm -hmm. A million resources on those already, so I wanted to talk about things like gay themes in RPGs <laughs> and like and like how to design clever social encounters mm -hmm. without making your players feel bad and things like like you can go look at the BXP back back catalog. I wanted to do something different. So let's talk about different content creation. Because that was one of the things that Doug you brought up when I said, What do you want to talk to me about? And you were like, I don't fucking know content creation. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, Doug and I both just, like, stared at each other for a while, and it was, like... <laughs> About a week. <laughs> I mean, we lived together, so it was very convenient. Yeah, like, just the montage, I had imagined briefly a montage of the two of you <laughs> sitting on either side of your table while, like, a sped up... <laughs> the sped up scene of your daily life, like your children and your cats playing in the background. And then at the end of that montage, you were like, a content creation, I guess. <laughs> I mean, that's pretty much how it went. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, how do you pr talk? Tell me how you produce your show. Okay. Oh, God. <laughs> it starts off with a bad idea. <laughs> All right. 97% of the time, yes. It's changed. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and take credit for uh, Malifaux Port Authority actually being an excellent idea. To be fair to you, though, we did think it was a bad idea. Sometimes bad ideas are good ideas in disguise. Very bad ideas in a trench coat. <laughs> and that's, and it's apt. An apt description of us in general. <laughs> okay, so new format for SBS, just three bad ideas in a trench coat. It's the three of us talking uh -huh. about literally anything. Just make sure they're bad ideas. Okay, sure. This can be the pilot episode of three bad ideas in a trench coat. Do you have any bad ideas? <laughs> Do we need another format? Okay. Uh, initially... The format, we we actually had a very, very, very similar idea of like, we didn't want to do this bog standard, get how to play the game or how to get super good at the game, because we knew that we wouldn't be able to sustain that format for long because we found it boring. No offense to the people that enjoy doing that sort of thing, but it doesn't entertain me. And at the end of the day, the only important thing is if I'm entertained. Victoria's <laughs> laughing. She's just mute. <laughs> she understood that to be a joke. <laughs> I I also understood that to be a joke. Carry on. <laughs> For lack of a better expression, I always refer to it as like a third generation podcast, but in the first generation of podcasts for a particular fandom. Okay. Where uh, I, I feel like it's third generation that all, like all the basic stuff is done and done to death. And now you're doing the very creative things or the weird things. Mm -hmm. Sort of get your voice out there. And so we just started with that, and we've just been running with it, and it's the only reason we've been running for so long. So initially, Steam Powered Scoundrels was just called Steam Powered Scoundrels. It was the two of us and a guest, almost exclusively just three people. We'd cover a long topic about the game, some sort of theory, occasionally like reviewing events in the game, or a smattering of how to play, and or like stuff involving actual gameplay and then we brought on our friends and it got a lot weirder after that then we branched out to the friday night Fodown format which was our we've got a bunch of like topics we want to cover but they're like 10 15 minute discussions how do we do that and just became a we're just going to do a rapid fire discussion question answer thing with a fist load of people more than three and do it for an hour plus asterisk and we had a lot of fun with that 
Mm-hmm. And so we just kind of just been doing that, came up with two other formats. We finally decided we'd do one that actually kind of sort of helped people with gameplay, but it was our own thing called Best Late Plans, where people would talk about the start of a game, and then at their, each round, Malfo takes place over five rounds. And in between each round, both players would talk about how the game is going, what they're planning on doing. That's the boring one. Um, <laughs> people like that one. I like that one. Roman does a fantastic job running best laid plans. He does. And then lastly, we came up with Malif of Portal. Well, Victoria and you did more than I. And that's our just talking about relations and being strictly wholesome about it. The most wholesome Strict, episodes. Strictly. Strictly. Strictly we, wholesome. We've never had the word fuck soup or fuck yurt, <laughs> yurt. or orgy golem. Or did you exhume? Uh, (laughs) That never happened on that format. So yeah, at this point we have four formats. Uh, SBS has always sort of remained our talk about current events or very, very long topics. And then everything else is spread out into the the, whatever other crap we want to do. And we just figure we do one or the other. And every once in a while we're like, hey, we haven't done uh, Best Laid Plans in a while. Or hey, we haven't done a Friday Night Photo in a while. Let's go ahead and do that. And that keeps it fresh for us as well as I think our audience likes it. I, I would imagine so. It's the impression I get from your community, at least. <laughs> <laughs> what? You think our community likes us? Weird. Why, why would they do that? <laughs> I, for the same reason mine does. I <laughs> Crazies. So the biggest compliment I've ever gotten about the show was from a dev. Uh-huh. They, were, they weren't even on our show. They were on a different show. Okay. There was a... A show back then called Third Floor Wars. It did more uh, how to play X Master content and stuff like that. And for their hundredth episode anniversary or something like that, they got one of the devs on to talk about the game. Mm-hmm. And they got into talking about all the content creators, and our name came up. And the first thing the dev did was just give a long sigh, which is <laughs> always good news. The highest of compliments. <laughs> And they just, uh, pretty much it came down to you don't know what you're going to get. The episode could be talking about gameplay and be the most serious thing, and the next one be talking about butts. I always like bringing up butts for some reason, because that was like... I mean, I still think that's one of the best titles that we've ever done. Yes. It was like the third... Yeah. It's not the best episode we've ever done, and in fact, I'm begging anybody that's going to come check us out (laughs) to not listen to our old episodes. Start at about 10, and you should be safe. (laughs) <laughs> safe <laughs> i'd say you can even go so far as when we started doing other formats yeah that was i thought the, that was F- the people who are who are coming to you from this episode are absolutely going to start with the ship episode episode that i'm in okay thank you uh, yes yeah, <laughs> that's where they're gonna begin i i can't I know say it. i recommend that either but it's better than starting at the beginning i mean we, I, can, I, we can explain uh, why <laughs> go for i think it. If you're okay with that sure and we'll say part of this is due to our community and us growing as people. But we used to have a a more conservative mindset, and that wasn't a, from a place of anger and cruelty. It was just ignorance on our part. And we learned and we've become better people. But a little bit of that humor was in our initial episodes. And I haven't deleted those episodes because I've always just sort of waited for someone to bring it up. So I can be like, actually, we've changed since then. We're not... Well, we are assholes, but we're like good assholes. <laughs> we're a different kind of asshole now. I think people our age definitely, or like, I think that's also maybe part of getting older where you're like, oh, oh, oh no. no, oh, no, oh, I said a lot of things that sucked, didn't I? Oh, oh God. Boy. Ooh. This is like, this aged like a 90s comedy. This is not. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, aged like a fine milk. Like. <laughs> <laughs> not even a fine milk like a cheap <laughs> store <laughs> brand milk, milk. the That's cheapest fair. milk from the back they corner of filed the- off the fucking <laughs> expiration <laughs> date <laughs> yeah yeah i i understand that if you knew me before i was 25 no you didn't <laughs> no you didn't <laughs> That's the f- yeah honestly i mean we we were probably a little bit older than we should have been when we finally started unlearning a bunch of stuff well it is life is a journey Uh and the important part is the unlearning not necessarily when (laughs) it's never too late and like besides just the really iffy content and the really iffy jokes or audio quality on those early episodes (laughs) not great um (laughs) so like even if that wasn't 
problematic and an issue. I still don't think I would recommend people listen to the early. That's fair. We're funnier the longer on you go, so. We also don't have a uh, four-year-old sifting through Legos in the background. (laughs) Right. That was like our fourth or fifth episode (laughs) title. It was just Lego sounds through the entire background. Uh, So I think I kind of, maybe we want to talk a little bit about like making a community too because i think that's a thing that both of us have in common and if i'm our our discord servers are of a sim of a size if i'm remembering right they're definitely a size there are definitely people on our discord (laughs) server we have the devs on our server i'm i am the dev (laughs) (laughs) we have devs on our server probably as like to watch us just not in like a we want to know what you're up to. Like, we're very suspicious <laughs> of you, and we're going to pull the plug on any support the second you say the wrong thing. Oh, they're way past that point. We've got five Malifaux port authorities live, and they still haven't pulled the plug on us. Like, I, I'm going to say that we're really safe. Well, I think I think you're only in trouble if you start revealing things that were NDA'd. That's when you'd be in the deep shit. It is of the realm of fandom to just be like, I want these two characters to fuck and there's nothing you can do about it. (laughs) (laughs) For for the record, Bonus Experience has 218 folks in its Discord and and Scoundrels, I think, has like 222. I just looked. Absolutely communities in a similar weight class. Yeah, 222. You have four more people on your Discord. Uh, (laughs) Get on our level, Monica. (laughs) If four people would like to join my Discord to spite them, (laughs) <laughs> actually i need i need five or six people you need five, yeah, yeah. yeah if, you if need five, five people would join my discord just to spite them if you could do that at the end of this episode that would be i'm fantastic. gonna start making alt accounts uh, <laughs> uh so like bxp doesn't really do formats i always get a wild hair up my ass to do that and then i don't because i have adhd and <laughs> this has been successful largely because i pay someone else to put the episode together for me and I have done a bunch of side spin-off shows, which were also once again produced by someone else. I just show up and talk into a microphone. That's my number one skill. <laughs> and one of the most successful spin-off shows is the systematic understanding of everything, which I did with two other of my podcast host friends. Uh, and it is an exalted explainer. And I have also introduced Doug and Vic fairly recently to playing Exalted. <laughs> and we are having fun. I made a problem. <laughs> yeah, it's it's been whether we've played one session, we built characters, we played one session, and it's been bonkers as I expected it to be. <laughs> yeah, already. Yeah. <laughs> well, with the group that we yeah. have, don't give me freedom. Just don't. <laughs> <laughs> so, if you were interested in learning more, there are thirty-three episodes of Systematic Understanding, and the first two are the one hundred and one. Like this is the broad strokes of what the game is about, and then we kind of deep dive in each episode. And then once we got kind of through all the big points, we were like, "Okay, we're done." And then each time a new book for the line goes to Kickstarter, we have another episode about it. And that's the. It's, it was nice to have a side project that ended. Oh, yeah, yeah, like we were just like we're gonna do we're gonna do the whole explainer. We're gonna get through all these topics in as many episodes as that takes, and then we're done. And then the only only new content we will do are Kickstarter release previews. And in that instance, I am the dev. That was it was me. I, <laughs> <laughs> the call was coming from inside the house. <laughs> and there, I think there there are definitely people on my Discord who are there for like the exalted spoilers that i theoretically may drop not in a not in an official <laughs> channel and if that's the case i tr- actually try not to do that you guys you should just go hang out in the big official discord and then the semi official one that has more people in it and <laughs> <laughs> either one of those places i'm usually posting stuff there if i'm posting anything at all and uh i'm not going to spoil stuff on my podcast discord that's a good way to get in trouble <laughs> Right. Yeah, it is. So we were talking about side projects and how systematic understanding of everything actually managed to end, which I put squarely at the feet of my two collaborators. One of them is very like organized and good at coordinating people and getting a project together. And we kind of had a we very much had a goal in mind. And so it was 
pretty great for us to be able to kind of like make a we kind of basically just made a roadmap and then we're like okay well once we discuss all the things that are on once we hit all the stops on this roadmap we're done that's it not we're not gonna say anymore and we were like agreed and we thought it was going to be the other thing is that we thought it was going to be like 10 or 15 episodes and as uh. i told you it, i think it hit 33 by the time we were done so it there was an element of like well we did have a plan but it, it was more than we bargained for. And given that it was an exalted project, I think we should have expected it to be more than we bargained for. Because that's everything about that fucking game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but to be fair, you did we finish it. We did finish it. it. Yeah, we did finish it. And I'm very proud of it. I think it's a really good show. And I strongly recommend that anybody interested in learning about exalted, go listen to it. The website is exaltcast.com. <laughs> I'm just impressed that you actually managed to start and complete side projects yeah all of our side projects just go into infinity tiktok oh god yeah youtube yes bonanza brawl bonanza brawl the the charity event charity has, a, event, has yeah. an ending date yeah unless we do it every year unless we do another charity event oh god <laughs> I'm one of those people that feels weirdly obligated to do as much as he can for the community. So I end up doing a lot. I'll fully admit uh, most of my free time that isn't dedicated to my family is dedicated to Malifaux in some way. And a good portion of that is because my friend community is a portion of Malifaux. So a lot of my creative juices goes towards it, and I want to facilitate the community to be a better place and more inviting and all this other stuff. So I give myself projects, even though I definitely cannot put more shit on my plate. <laughs> I do it anyways, because I'm stupid. You should stop that. I did complete one side project. Wh which one was that? Technically. What's, what's that? That was the character sheet for Through the Breach oh, nice. on yeah. Roll20. That's a good character sheet. Which, the last episode, yeah. um, there are two episodes before this one was an episode on character sheets, actually. Yeah, I mean, I'll fully admit the one they give you in the back of the book is not yeah, enough we, space. You can, you can certainly go check that episode out because we talk about that. <laughs> we talk about, like, character sheets that don't present things in a way that makes sense. Like, the flow of this, I think the flow of a character sheet should follow kind of character creation. So, like, when you start at the top, that should be the first thing I'm assigning points to or rolling or you know flipping for or whatever mm -hmm. that's my you, you can go listen to that episode it's also a very good episode and then there's gonna be a mechanics workshop in between that one and this one that is a crossover with another podcast i do that'll do that a lot as i'm good friends with uh the host of mage the podcast for people who are fans of mage the ascension not awakening damn you two versions of mage both starting with a uh <laughs> purple mage not blue mage a thing that only means things to people who have seen physical copies of the books and mage the podcast like is mostly about using other mechanics to make your mage games a, a 20 year old game better and i have been a repeat appearance on that despite having literally never played the game the show is about <laughs> 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 I mean, like, to be fair, I had, like, three games of Malifaux in, like, four years? Three is more than zero. Uh, technically, I, I don't mean, mathematically it is. Three is more than zero. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm, like, a permanent co-host on a podcast only about Malifaux. I mean, that's fair. But also, you are plenty qualified to talk about the things <laughs> that you guys talk about. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so we talk it, about it's, yes. It's an important distinction that it's Malifaux the universe, not not Malifaux the game. Yes. Yeah. I remember the first time I was doing a Malifaux thing, and I encountered someone who was just like, "No, I just play the game. I've never read any of the stories." And I'm just like, "But like, that's the oh. part. Of, that's part of why you buy the fucking book." Like, I was aghast. I was like, "But the, but the writing is pretty good." Like. I'm I'm sorry, I can no longer speak to you. Yeah, they, were, um, they were kind of a sourpuss anyway, so... How will you know who kisses who? Yeah, how do who? you... It's very yeah, important. How, how, how will I make jokes about what's going on if you haven't read all the stories <laughs> on the, on the board? Right, yeah, like, how are we supposed to have a laugh after this tournament? Because Trixie Bell said, do you want to know where I'm going to put this lemon? And then Vanessa ran eight inches away. Like... <laughs> <laughs> 
that's a real thing that happened. <laughs> There's a lot of people in my audience who are like, what the fuck are they talking about? <laughs> <laughs> Malfo is a skirmish war game, a character driven skirmish war game that yes. usually features both sides playing, fielding between eight and ten characters, I would say. Almost every character is not like a grunt or whatever. There's some basic units, but it's not like a, a, a big army thing where like you have uh, 11 nameless elves, you know, and they're all one unit, right? So each character is like a specific character with a little bit of lore and a personality and it has a pretty cool continuity and it's a really neat setting and there's there's like a shit ton of fiction. There's like a novella's worth of fiction in every book and mm -hmm. it's pretty well written. It's very enjoyable to read. There's kind of a fun meta plot and that when you know all those things, playing with your little figures on the table becomes significantly funnier because you're like, oh, I'm thinking about these as my little blurbos in their situations instead <laughs> of just being like, if I have this many activations, I will be ahead of my opponent. I can control the end of the turn. I can make sure I'm in position for scoring my schemes next round. And if I can just, you know, do this thing, I can deny them so many points, blah, blah, blah. That, that always, even when I was like super competitive, and this is a game that I played very competitively during second edition, being good was always secondary to, like, the fucking around. <laughs> I mean, being, being good at this game sounds awful. It's, it's just a concentrated amount of flavor with how little they have to work it's with. It's super mechanically impressive. Like, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm pretty consistently impressed with the design in a lot of ways. Even when I'm like, I have some critiques of this. It's really fun to see that sort of marriage of flavor and mechanics. It's really... Really outstanding, truly. It's uh, <laughs> so much flavor. Like, pretty much it's a rule in our Discord. Well, not like a stated rule, but it's an unspoken rule in our Discord that like, yeah, we're all going to have critiques on things that Weird does, but we also understand that the devs are human yeah, and they're real. doing their best. Thank you. <laughs> it's not the game that I develop, but thank you anyway. <laughs> oh, for sure. There, There is one games company. No, two now. Two games companies that I assign malicious intent to, and Weird is not one are of them. Are they Wizards of the Coast and Games Workshop? They are. <laughs> what? Yeah. The people who hired the actual Pinkertons? Pinkertons? Yeah, them. Yeah, them. Yeah, I'm talking about them. <laughs> we had this discussion very recently in that Weird might do that, but they would force the Pinkertons to cosplay <laughs> as the turn of the century Pinkertons. <laughs> and they're just delivering our cease and desist after the next yeah. MPA. One of these days, we'll finally get that season. To Weird, start. you should just get someone to dress up as a pay. You can pay me. I'll put my Sonya costume on and I will go to their house and deliver the C&D. Burn it down. Oh, OK. Oh, please don't burn our house. No, I'm down. not going to burn that in anyone's house. I'm just going to deliver with C&D. It's not very Sonya of you, but OK. It's very, it's, That's it not is, our war it's, criminal. It's the most Sonya of me. What are you talking about? <laughs> Oh no, Sonia Cred, are you gonna burn our house down? No. I'm serving you. Oh. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh, I thought you just meant serving the CD period was out of character for her. <laughs> and I was like, no, it isn't. No, the not burning oh, your house. Oh yeah. Down that is, is a little that is a little out of character. <laughs> that is that part's a little out of character. Well, I mean, I'll just to to be true to the character, fine. I'll take everything out of your house that's of interest to me and then I'll set it on fire. How's that? <laughs> I forgot what we were talking about. Um, <laughs> content, creation, content creation, side projects, yeah, yeah, yeah. and then <laughs> describing what Malfoy Malf was. Right, and then flavor. And then... Minor celebrity status was, was suggested. Oh, yeah. yeah micro, point, micro celebrity. Micro celebrity. <laughs> micro celebrity. Yeah. Uh, there's, there is a uh, certain amount of micro celebrity in being like a tabletop game dev and a podcast mm -hmm. host. Mm -hmm. I got to go to a teeny tiny little con several years ago where the majority of the attendees were fans of podcasts on the network that this is a part of. And I got to have the 30 seconds of feeling like a total rock star where I'm, <laughs> it was held on a college campus. So I'm just like in this like cafeteria gameplay space and I'm just sort of shooting the shit with someone and somebody recognized me by voice. <laughs> oh yeah. We've had that experience. Yeah, and then it was like, <gasps> you're Monica from bonus experience. And I was like, I am Monica from bonus experience. <laughs> How do you know this? <laughs> Have you been stalking me? And I had a moment of like, die. am I wearing a name tag? And then I was like, oh, you recognize the sound of my voice. That's a wild thing to have happened to me. <laughs> yeah, that's how we uh, met Roman and Nate. Oh, yeah? 
Yeah, they came out to Iowa for um, back when MuzonCon was a thing, mm-hmm. and um, yeah, we were just kind of hanging out and uh, and a Buffalo Wild Wings and a Buffalo <laughs> Wild Wings, and I don't remember what we were talking about, but all of a sudden they just looked at us and they were like, "You're steam powered scoundrels." <laughs> It's like, yes, we are. (laughs) I am that thing. I am that. We have listeners. We basically sat in the Buffalo Wild Wings and talked to Roman and Nate for however long this group dinner went. Nice. We asked if they wanted to be on the podcast, and they were like, yeah, and that's... And the rest, as they say, is history. Yeah, basically. That's awesome. That's such a good feeling, isn't it? Like, you just... it's, It's the perfect amount of celebrity, because... Like you're the paparazzi are mm-hmm. never gonna show up at your house or harass your children. <laughs> but occasionally you get to feel like a fucking rock star. Or like the the normal person's version of that where yeah. you're just like, Oh fuck, I made something that a stranger liked. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh hey, we get recognized at events specifically for this thing that we do a podcast about. And nowhere else. And, and it, like the other thing about being sort of the the micro celebrity at the level that we are on is that you can still kind of be friends with your audience. We're yeah. like, you have regular people who hang out in your discord. You talk to them all the time. They get to talk to you directly. You have your nice little secret patrons discord where they get to kind of be even closer to you and have a little bit more of your attention. And like, there's opportunity to form genuine friendships mm-hmm. with your fandom. And I know that there's a lot of warning about parasocial things and stuff like that. And you should... You should be wary of people who are too clingy, you know? Yes, of there's, course. There's a, health, there's a healthy amount of attachment that you need to, to foster, right? Yeah. But, like, the friendships that you can have with a small community are real as opposed to superficial. Yeah, like, yeah. It, be, it gets harder and harder to directly engage with your audience if your audience is, like, a million Big, people. Big, yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah, our, our audience of, like, 200 regular listeners is... Yep. Perfect. <laughs> yeah. I knew that was a shared experience, and mm-hmm. it's an interesting also peripheral to the gaming aspect, because we both have this recognition, this tiny bit of recognition for similar, like, spheres of influence. Mm-hmm. I thought it, thought it was cool. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like, most of the time, I, we get to live our regular, boring, mundane lives and occasionally make some content, or constantly make some content, depending on which one of us it is. Um, (laughs) but like we we do get to have that experience of going to like cons and stuff and tournaments and having people be like oh your last episode blah 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 and yeah so cool so so, 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 it it makes you feel like a million bucks like for the rest of the day it's also a very strange feeling like realistically (laughs) it's like oh you've heard some very weird things that i've said and yeah. now we're yeah, meeting there, face to face. <laughs> there You're, is a little bit of an element of like, oh, I just say whatever I'm thinking on that show, and then I put it out in public, mm-hmm. and then ah, ah, fuck, I put it out in public. Oh god, this person has <laughs> heard the words "fuck your" come out of my mouth, and mm-hmm. uh... <laughs> at "fuck ghost" is the one from from Systematic Understanding of Everything. I've also said the phrase "fuck ghost," and I said the phrase "fuck ghost" angrily. <laughs> so. If that's not enough reason to sell you on listening to that show, at some point in it, I say the phrase, fuck ghost angrily. Well, uh, (laughs) Eli, when we did one of the MPAs that you weren't on, Eli was Mm -hmm. editing it and he cut out a bunch of like clips of things that I said. And (laughs) one of them was the horny woes quote. And it was... (laughs) And it's like, God, there are like... 200 people out there that have heard me say bizarre shit that I really would not have said to anybody in a different context. A whole bunch more people are going to go listen to this and then get to hear me say the words, fuck yurt. (laughs) So that was a great example of like, not only do you have this weird celebrity status, but you also find out that sometimes your weird goblin energy rubs off onto other people's weird goblin energy. And then the joke about the fuck yurt Eventually leads to someone making an STL of it. <laughs> I strongly considered printing that out, painting it, and giving it away as a tournament prize. <laughs> it would have been amazing, honestly. <laughs> ah, yes. Uh, the golden fuck, fuck your... T- <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
maybe we explain what the fuck here it is. No, to very they have to go to. No, go listen to the episode, the ship yeah. episode that I'm in. Um, I think which it was the first, the first one. Fuck you, it's the first one. It's the first one. It's the first, the first ship one, episode. Yeah. yeah, you have to. You have to go listen to our podcast now. Yeah, yeah, that's the deal. If there's anything I can be relied on, it's to say the word <laughs> fuck and then put an unusual <laughs> noun behind it. <laughs> <laughs> BXP is brought to you by the Misdirected Mark Network. Bing bong. <laughs> Such a depressed bing bong. <laughs> I was going for sultry, I'm sorry. <laughs> sounded like, you sounded like you had given up. <laughs> uh, become a BXP patron. Patrons get an extended cut of every episode, episodes early, and a special place to hang out on our Discord. And you can support us for as little as one crisp American dollar a month. If you'd rather support BXP without Patreon, you can subscribe to us on Coffee instead, ko-fi.com slash bonus EXP, or go buy our stuff. You can go to bxpcast.com slash bxp swag, and you can check out the links to our merch page. Or, don't forget, Bonus Experience is sponsored by Nerdy Kepi. You can get all kinds of really cool, really awesome, rad queer swag, and the Kickstarter-backed Exalted bags that have the Exalted Essence logo and a bunch of hand-picked art from the book. And there's a video on there of me putting four exalted books in the bag, and then you could carry it around without a problem. I just took all my gaming stuff and put them in there. Strongly recommend it. Go check that out. Nerdycappy.com. Use code BXPCAST to check out for 10% off, and that never expires. So if you want to buy every single one of the exalted bags, and there are six, you can just keep using the code every time you come back. Just, I don't know what you're going to do with those bags, but just putting that out there. Also... Saying nice things is always free. Leave us a good review on Apple Podcasts, Podbean, Google, wherever, and help us get more listeners. And if you liked Bonus Experience and the absolute gremlin energy that we are bringing tonight, you will also like The Misdirected Mark. Phil, Chris, Bob, and Jerry break down and get inside games, game mastering, playing games, and game design in an effort to entertain and inform you. So, if you want to listen to more of Bonus Experience, you can find us at bxpcast.com. Part of the misdirected Mark Network. Ding dong, bing bong. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, you can email us at bonusexpcast at gmail.com if you have anything you'd like to say. And you can follow us on at bonus experience on Tumblr, where I am slowly uploading this season's episodes with direct links to our YouTube. If you look up bonus experience podcast on YouTube, you can find all of our episodes there. You can also come hang out with us. I need five of you to come hang out with us on the Bonus Experience Discord, tinyurl.com slash bxpdiscord. And if you want to hear more of me, I am an occasional guest on Mage the Podcast. You can check me out there. And I'm also sometimes a guest of the Eternal Mooncast, talking about my other special interest, Sailor Moon, which can be found at eternalmooncast.com. And then I already plugged the systematic understanding of everything, so I'm not going to do that again here. The Scoundrels. Hey. hey. Tell our guests where they can find you, where they can find your show, and anything else you have going on right now. Oh my god, I don't have the links memorized. Oh shit. Okay, <laughs> I mean, Steam Pirate. Everybody's, everybody's got Google. Yeah, okay. Steam Pirate Scoundrels and Malifa Podcast is a podcast about Malifa where we talk about stuff that is tangentially related to Malifa. We have the podcast on Podbean and we share it across other places. We have the Discord. Come on here in case you, I don't know, want to make Monica feel sad about her numbers on Discord. We also have, right, I have a TikTok. I have a TikTok called, um, well, I think it's just Steam Powered Scoundrels, but I mostly just do assembly videos for Malifa because Malifa models are slightly difficult to put together. So I've took it upon myself to make videos for assembling that stuff that ended up on YouTube, which I believe is Artifactors Union is the name of the channel. We also have a Patreon. I don't know if you really, really like us for some reason. And that's kind of sad to be perfectly honest. If you, though, have a bunch of uh, spending cash that you don't really give a shit about, we do have a coffee for our new charity event that we got going on in June. June 16th through the 18th, we are raising money for a couple of children's cancer charities. Our youngest daughter is now wrapping up her chemotherapy for leukemia, and we thought we'd get back to some of these charities that have helped us out. So if you just want to support them through the guise of just supporting uh, of gaming and gaming being nice to other people, um, other than that, anything else, Vic? Uh, the podcast is also available on Spotify. All right. And Apple. I don't even remember where we pumped it all out of. I don't know, you'll find it if you look. Awesome. If anybody wants to go to that, check all those out. Um, and Doug, you can give me links and I can post those in the show notes. 
All right, then uh, we we're, we're that does it. We're gonna wrap it up. Everybody, get out. Bye. 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 And remember, change it if you want to. Do I have to do this? Oh, fine. Bonus Experience is written by Monica uh, and edited by Margaret. Our logo and art is by Nino Studios. Find her on Facebook and Instagram. Our theme song is Reuse Noise with the Light by CDK and is used under the attribution non-commercial Creative Commons license. BXP is part of the Misdirected Mark Network. Okay, there, I read it. Now, bye. I'm in charge here. You you are. It is it is your podcast. Mm-hmm. You truly mad I with can, power. I can fuck it up as much as I want. <laughs>